Whether you love Martin Brundle's awkward grid walks, where he pretty much gets all the celebrities wrong, including a very awkward moment with Venus Williams in Miami, which had the whole F1 world cringing, or Ted's notebook that gives insight into all things F1, Sky Sports is a mainstay of F1 and has been stable over the last few years. But it now looks like significant changes are happening. Stick around to discover the significant changes and how Red Bull was left embarrassed and red-faced at their car launch in New York. All the changes in F1 look to be rubbing off on Sky Sports, with the UK-based broadcaster getting in on the act with a significant shakeup happening in its F1 broadcasting team. The TV rights for Sky do not come cheap, with Sky signing a £1 billion eight-year contract for exclusive rights to air F1 with Liberty Media. This contract was due to end in 2024, but has been extended to 2029, with the details of the new contract not being released. But if I were to fathom a guess, it would be costly, as the growing popularity of F1 will mean this is a prized asset Sky does not want to lose. With such high value being placed on the F1 contract, you expect the Sky F1 team to be of a similar standard. Everyone will have opinions on presenters, whether it's good or bad. Some love Martin Brundle, others can't stand him. At the end of the day, they are there to create talking points and have their own opinions. Whether you agree with them or not, they are paid to give their say. Now, one team who took severe offense to Sky was Red Bull. The team caused a stir in the paddock last season by boycotting at Sky Sports, with Sky Sports F1 director having to go to the Red Bull factory to clear the air with the team. Clearly, it's not just us fans that get over the narrative that Sky can go on. However, the boycott is now water under the bridge, with Sky Sports and Red Bull on talking terms, and the whole show is the better for it. Having annoyed Red Bull last year, Sky Sports may be looking to annoy another F1 team this season. This time, it would be Mercedes and, in particular, Toto Wolff, with Martin Brundle completely disagreeing with the Austrian on new teams entering the grid. Speaking on Sky Sports F1, the 63-year-old revealed he was more than open to expanding the team roster. Getting more teams in is a logistical thing as well as a financial aspect, you know. Will they fit in the pit lane, the paddock, on the grid? How many cars do we need? I think 24 cars will be great personally. We've got 29 races this season, 23 Grand Prix and 6 sprint races with 20 cars on the grid. I don't think it's quite enough of a show personally and opportunity. But if you look at the Ford thing, it's a halfway house really. It's an interesting one. Red Bull had Infinity on for a while, then it had Aston Martin on the side of it for a while before Aston got their own team. So this is a branding thing, said Brundle. I don't think we will see Mercedes boycotting Sky over this claim. Still, it certainly raises the question around the expansion of the grid, with almost everyone having a different opinion on the matter. But enough of that, as we have all heard enough of it. Now, Sky has recently announced its F1 team for the upcoming season, with many fans shocked to see two of its favorite presenters being axed. The two presenters axed are ex-F1 drivers Johnny Herbert and Paul De Resta. Many fans have been asking why they got the axe, and we think we know why. Let's dig a little deeper into Johnny and Paul's axing. Johnny has been a mainstay on the Sky presenting lineup for the last 11 years, with the former Benetton driver being popular amongst many, particularly for his various opinions and not always agreeing with his co-presenters. However, Sky was very thankful for Johnny's work, a Sky Sports spokesperson saying, Johnny has been an integral part of our Formula One team since the very first season on Sky Sports in 2012. We will miss his humor and big personality, and thank him for his energy and enthusiasm over the last 11 years. Everyone wishes him all the best for the future." The announcement of Johnny's departure has left many F1 fans scratching their heads, but if you look a little deeper into it, the reason is pretty apparent and could be considered an open secret. Johnny has always enjoyed his opinion, and one matter in particular has got him in trouble. The Abu Dhabi finish with Johnny having this to say, for me, they got it wrong, and it's very simple. In the past, when the safety car is going to come in, all the lapped cars have been allowed to pass, not just a couple, he told the Times in 2021. I suppose it was all a rush to try and make this a one-lap race, but it was wrong and unfair because Lewis did absolutely nothing wrong whatsoever. Red Bull had to try and play, going into the pits for fresh tires, but for the FIA, and especially Michael, to muck it up so badly just put a bad taste in your mouth once the chequered flag had gone. Through the curve of the sole, Perez ahead and in third place. Sites coming at him in 
this, Charlotte! Johnny has refused to tell the line with F1, the FIA, and Sky Sports, which ultimately looks to have gotten him in trouble. After the Ted Kravitz incident in 2022, it now looks like Sky is unwilling to risk another Red Bull boycott and has let Johnny go altogether. Johnny has been great over his extended period with Sky and will be sorely missed, with the Sky team only having good things to say about him. David Croft quickly commented on his farewell post, and we're going to miss you too, mate. You never fail to put a smile on all our faces, have had such brilliant times with you over the years. Pundit Naomi Schiff added, We're going to miss you the most, Johnny. Had so much fun with you. What a kind soul. And Paul DeResta looks to be another casualty of Sky F1 this season. The reason for him leaving is mainly due to his contract, which is due to expire, and Sky felt that it does not want to renew it. It seems weird to me why Sky is getting rid of two experienced former drivers, but keeping presenters that have not raced, but only time will tell if this is a good move. But again, fans are not happy with DeResta getting the axe. Express Sport conducted a poll which discovered that 64.4% are against DeResta being dropped. And with regard to Johnny, it does not look like this will be the end, with the former driver having this to say. I'm not with Sky this year, unfortunately, but there are other things I'll be getting involved with, he told motorsport content creator Lars Lap Lucy. I'll be at Silverstone for sure and the Monaco Grand Prix. I'm hoping to get to Le Mans as well this year, because that's going to be a big event this time around two for Mercedes. It's gorgeous for George. It's absolutely wonderful. And moving on to Red Bull now, the team recently launched their new car. Well, not really. They just showed us their new livery, which, shock horror, was the same as last year's. However, one announcement that did cause a stir in the F1 world was Red Bull's new partnership with Ford, the worst kept secret in F1. On the day, however, Red Bull was left red-faced and embarrassed by the head of F1, Stefano Dominicali. Stefano was due to say a short statement on Ford's entry into F1, but if anyone was still watching at Red Bull's car reveal at that point after they dragged out the proceedings, they would have noted that things got somewhat awkward on stage as the presenters called the F1 boss to the scene, but to no avail. The F1 CEO reportedly decided not to go on stage due to concerns it would send the wrong impression to other teams, including Ferrari and Mercedes. However, he did issue a statement later that read, The news today that Ford is coming to Formula One from 2026 is great for the sport, and we're excited to see them join the incredible automotive partners already in Formula One. Ford is a global brand with an incredible heritage in racing and the automotive world, and they see the huge value that our platform provides with over half a billion fans around the world. Do you think Sky Sports was right to axe Johnny and Paul? Comment below.